it's Cindy and Kathleen and this is the Classroom Cafe. This past Monday we hosted a professional development here at our school along with two of our co-workers Sonia and Stephanie on QR codes and how to use them in the main portion of a class discussion. Sonia talked about scavenger hunts. She gave us these neat little pieces of paper that are great for student hands and it has answers on it and she would direct them to the first QR code around campus with the question. They scan the QR code and it would come up with a question. And then it says, if your answer is nine, go here. If your answer is seven, go here. And so you go through all the different steps and it takes you around the campus in the form of a scavenger hunt with the QR codes. It was really a neat idea. It was. She worked some of the problems um, incorrectly with common uh, student mistakes so that they might end up at the gym when they were supposed to be at the tennis courts. Uh, when they ended up at the that gym... That would be me. I would be at the gym. <laughs> no. They would scan it um, and she would just redirect them back to the original location and to ask them to check their work. Uh, when they recheck their work, then hopefully they would end up over at their correct place. So I thought that was really neat. Um, it was uh, working with groups. Right. Um, so not Outside. everybody had, yeah, not everybody had to have a cell phone for this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in all the ideas, it, we kind of paired up with paired students up so that not if, if, if everybody in your room didn't have a cell phone, they could still participate. Right. Um, Stephanie did a jigsaw activity, same thing, uh, getting the kids working in groups, one cell phone per group, um, where she had the students uh, covering different parts of the content of what she was presenting on that day or whatever the topic right. of discussion was. So just like a traditional jigsaw activity, but in when the kids got to their groups, there would be QR codes for them to scan with their phones and read or watch a video or hear something about uh, the topic of the day for them. They all got back together and each group then shared what they learned in their groups. So that was really neat too. It was neat. I, I find when I do jigsaws that directing them to the places that I want them to go to get the accurate information um, can be kind of a burden and it is good to teach them how to evaluate those resources and things like that but for a quick jigsaw and to get out that accurate information it's so much better just to do the QR codes and it's fun, it's something different and I think the students really enjoy it. Definitely. Um, Really quickly, mine was uh, QR codes and textbooks. I think this is uh, the easiest thing that we did that day. Uh, simply find a video that supports the curriculum, um, find a website, find an original. We did uh, Roosevelt's Fireside Chats mm -hmm. for History. Um, we did Dr. Martin Luther King's speech. Something that is significant that a textbook paper just can't bring alive. Um, so the students would scan the book code with their um, phone and then be able to uh, be redirected to those those places and just really kind of brightened up their curriculum. I think. Right, right. Um, my activity or my idea was the last one that we covered and I talked about storytelling using QR codes where um, I've already blogged about the Ellis Island reflection so go read that but we had an Ellis Island activity where we reenacted through role play what it was like to come into the country through Ellis Island and we um, I asked the students to, to write a um, reflection or a letter back to their original country on what it was like to come into the country and so they did that they recorded it either using their voice recorder or their video recorder and I created a QR code and just uh, stuck it on a Statue of Liberty poster in my room. So that's a really good way. You could do that with art. Please make a drawing and then tell the story of the drawing or, or how you envision that drawing and then create a QR code for that. Or um, any, it could really apply to anyone. Right, I've seen, it, I've seen it with book talks, the how to, how to work a math tutorial. Any of those things uh, could be student created. Uh, links for the QR codes. Somebody asked me what's the big deal about QR codes? No real big deal other than it's so much more convenient to have a student yes. scan with their cell phone and be redirected to a website than have them actually try to type in and locate those websites right. online or have you even maybe go and make the links. Um, and it gets them up and moving. Right. Uh, three of the ideas really were more group work. Even mm -hmm. with your storytelling, they would have had to have probably help filming maybe right. a, a videographer while the other person was recording. They did. Um, and so we liked that. We liked that it was just different. Right. And I think as teachers, we're always looking for something quick and easy. On the website, we have a link 
to a website that Kathleen actually developed for just this professional development. Um, and we'll put the link out there for that as well as on this video. It is Western themed. Our professional development was Western. Right. We were themed. wild about QR codes. And so it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We'll put it some other really stuff fun. out there from that day as well. And then um, directions on how to actually create a QR code yourself. It really is as easy as one, two, three. It is. It takes two seconds. Seven it minutes. is. All right. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope that you can find one way this week to incorporate QR codes into your curriculum. Join us next week where we provide a new and, and easy and exciting thing to try in your classroom. All right. Thanks so much. See you next week where we take it from worksheets to wonderful. Thank you.